I want to talk to you for a moment about something called recovery expectation. Recovery expectation is a term that we use in the pain science and pain education world. And it's become fairly important because what we're finding is that recovery expectation is directly correlated with results. In other words, if you have a chronic pain condition and you believe that your chances for recovery are very low or maybe non-existent, you will have poor results. If you believe that it is possible to change your pain, to heal from your pain, your results will be better. Now, this isn't just run-of-the-mill positive thinking, okay? I'm not asking you to ignore the pain that you have because I know that it is very, very real and it is extremely problematic for your life. What I'm asking you to do instead is to engage yourself with your program with the full expectation that it can help you. Um, I was just reading this paper about, oh, it's this paper. I was just reading this paper, Dispelling the Myth that Chronic Pain is Unresponsive to Treatment. So the fact is, even in the pain science world, up until very recently, there's been kind of this weird idea that we can't really change pain. And in the last four or five years, what we found over and over and over is that that is not true. We can change pain. In fact, in this paper, they did a review of randomized controlled trials, a very stringent review, review called a Cochrane Review, of individuals with low back pain. And they were basically trying to determine two, one of two things, which one was better as a result of non-pharmacological, non-surgical interventions for low back pain. Did people get more benefit functionally? In other words, were they able to do the everyday activities of their life better? Or did they experience less pain intensity as a result of these interventions? They fully expected to see that the individuals had better function, but still had the same amount of pain. In other words, they had learned to accept their pain. This was expected. And what this Cochrane Review found was that was actually not true. Individuals did have results in function. They were able to do their activities better, but the pain intensity metric was actually better supported. So people actually had less pain as a result of this. Now, there's a reason I think that we feel kind of uncomfortable with believing in our treatments. We think that the only way to address pain is going to be to address our biological tissues. And while it's true that we do have to address your tissues, there is no way that you can truly address and heal and change pain without addressing all of the complicated factors that contribute to your pain. So yes, maybe or maybe not tissue damage. A lot of people have chronic intractable pain and no tissue damage. So yeah, we might have to address that. If nothing else, we'll address potentially a deconditioning that happens when you've been in pain for a long time, right? So we can make tissues healthier. In this program though, we're also going to make your nervous system healthier and we're gonna calm it down because right now it's really, really sensitive. In order to address the nervous system, we're also going to have to address thoughts and feelings we're going to have to introduce you to a much richer and more varied experience of your internal self, both the, the sensational self, but also the psychological self. We'll have to address movement, we'll have to address your breathing, and we'll also have to address the other environmental factors that contribute to your pain. So this is known as the biopsychosocial model of pain. 
and it is now the standard for pain care in pretty much the rest of the world except for the US. So a lot of the videos that you're going to see, the educational videos, they're not coming from people in the US because in the US we only treat pain with surgery or with pills. But in Australia and Canada especially, there is a growing consensus that these things are not effective at addressing pain. And you know this because that's probably what you've been doing. And you're here now, which means that you've made a great choice. So when you finish this video, right, when it ends, I'd like for you to take another step, okay? So this is the first step. The next step is that you'll either go lay down in a comfortable position, or maybe you're comfortable sitting, and really think about, meditate on your own recovery expectation, whatever it is, right? Whatever your expectation is, I'd like for you to become familiar with it. And then I'm hoping very much that you have somebody around you or somebody that you can call that you can talk to, someone who will really listen to you about your recovery expectation, okay? Someone who's more able to listen to you than tell you what they think. Because I would like for you to have the opportunity to just really go through your thought process. You know, something really special happens when you verbalize your feelings. So first you meditate on, on it, you're really honest about how you feel, and then you talk about it. And you talk about the reasons why you don't think this is gonna work, and you talk about the reasons why you do think it's gonna work, okay? I'm not asking for you to get on board with me and say, okay, I believe it. That's not reasonable, you're an intelligent person. You've tried things before, and you're still in pain, right? I get that it's not gonna be like that, okay? So the next step is for you to work through it. And hopefully it's going to help for you help you to reconceptualize pain so that you can change pain and so that you can heal pain.